There was a report published last week with recommendations to the government which are enough to put shivers down the spine of anyone and everyone who is currently working in the UK and paying tax into the system. So much so that I think it's really worthwhile us talking about this today in this video. And as always, I'm gonna try and be my helpful self, give you tips, things that you should be doing right now to get ahead of this problem. And believe me, this is a pretty big problem and time is of the essence. So it's no secret, we're all living much longer. And when you look at the life expectancy numbers for the UK specifically, they've increased significantly compared to what they were back in the 1950s and the 1960s. And there are many contributing factors to this. One of them will be improvements in medical technology and medical care. And we have considerably better living conditions than they did back in the 1950s and the 1960s. What's interesting though is when you start digging into the numbers to see how far the numbers have shifted in terms of this increase in life expectancy. Here's a few examples. So in the 1950s, the life expectancy at birth in the UK was around 66 years old for a man and 71 years old for a woman. When you fast forward to 1960, that number had risen to 68 years old for a man and 73 years old for a woman. So over the course of a decade, 10 years, an increase in life expectancy of two years. And when you look at the more recent numbers gathered in 2022, the life expectancy for a man is now approximately 79 years old and for a woman is 83 years old. It's quite a considerable jump. And it's the reason why in this report, it is recommended that the government moves the state pension age to 71. Speaking of the state pension, the state pension is this weird thing because it's not like a normal pension where it's funded from a pot of money. It's funded from the tax take. It's quite confusing, but here's a very simple way to look at it. So picture an ATM, and at the front of this ATM, you have people taking money out. Those are effectively state pensioners right now in receipt of their state benefit. Now, at the back of the ATM, you need to have people paying money in in order for the flow of cash at the front to continue. Well, those filling in the ATM at the back are effectively the taxpayers of today, you and I. And when you think about the way the system works from that point of view, because people are living much, much longer, this simply isn't sustainable anymore. There is a huge debate as to whether or not the state pension is an entitlement or a benefit. And when you consider what you have to do to gain access to the full state pension, you would think that it would be an entitlement. I mean, you've got to contribute 40 years worth of national insurance contributions, qualifying national insurance contribution years to get the full state pension. So when you think of it that way, you would think that it is an entitlement, but unfortunately it's not. On April the 6th, 2016, under Section 1, Clause 1 of the Pensions Act 2014, the government officially classed the state pension as a benefit, not an entitlement. Now, as you can imagine, that upset a lot of people. And indeed, there was a petition submitted during the 2015 to 2017 Conservative government that protested this, that wanted the, to get the government to look at this again and reclassify it, or at least declassify it as a benefit. Unfortunately, that petition only got 14,000 signatures. And this is where we are today. The state pension is not an entitlement, it is a benefit. So I've been paying attention to my Instagram on this because last week, right after this hit the news, I posted a reel. And on the reel, I explained briefly what, what was happening and I asked people to share their opinion on what they thought about this. And I gave two options. Number one, you think it's a piss take. Number two, you kind of agree that it needs to move. And the response was that 98% of people think that it's a piss take. Now, let's be completely honest. It definitely feels like it, and it actually is a bit of a piss take, particularly when you think about the fact that the current crop of state pensioners are being funded by us, by our tax take. But in turn, those state pensioners have also funded state pensioners that have gone before them. I think ultimately when you look at it, though, and I'm trying to be as helpful as I possibly can and candid on this video, you kind of have to be pragmatic with the way the world currently works. The reality is that it isn't sustainable and it does have to move. And so I agree with both people who, sets of people who voted. It is a piss take, but it does have to move because it simply isn't sustainable. And so what I want to do 
in this section of the video is just give you, you know, four things that you absolutely have to get right. And the first two are immediate actions that you need to take. The first one is this. If you are employed in a business right now, your employer has to contribute to a pension on your behalf under auto enrollment. You will have a workplace pension scheme. If you opted out, you are robbing yourself. And I cannot even tell you how much of a disservice you are doing to your future self. So the first thing you need to do tomorrow morning is go and enroll into your workplace pension. If you are enrolled in your workplace pension, fantastic, congratulations. What you now need to do is ask a series of questions. And the first one you should be asking is this, is there a facility where your employer will match your pension contributions? And what this basically means is that you have to contribute a certain amount. Your employer has to contribute a certain amount. Their contribution is less than yours. But if, for example, you go from 5% to a 10% contribution, they may go from a 3% contribution on their behalf, which is their minimum, up to a 10%, which means that now you're going from 8% to 20% contribution. Go and ask the question whether you have that in your workplace. Because if you do, you want to find a way to ensure that you're able to take advantage of that. It is free money. So take the free money. That's the first thing if you're employed in a business. The second thing is for those of you who will be self-employed running your own business. Trust me, I know how hard it is. If you're running your own business, you're worried about keeping your business afloat. You're worried about VAT if you're VAT registered. You're worried about your, your corporation tax. You're worried then about your own personal income and what you have to do for your own self-assessment, which again, is just past January 31st. There are so many things that will be on your mind. And oftentimes, your own pension contributions via your business isn't anywhere on the radar. Well, it needs to be now. It really needs to be now. So the first thing you need to do is look at opening a private pension or a SIP. Now, I'm gonna give you two providers. One, Vanguard, because they are extremely cost effective. They're the cheapest on the market, but you kind of need to know what, you, what you're doing. If you have no clue about pensions or investments that you would rather have someone do it for you, then companies like Pension B are perfect. You do not have to commit to a monthly contribution and because your income may be sporadic, pension will be perfect because you can start with a pound and every three months throw in whatever you want or sporadically throw in whatever you want. The third thing is this, you need to plan for your retirement looking at a pension as though there is gonna be no state pension because for too long, people have been relying on the state to provide an income for them in retirement. Those days are over. So you need to plan under the assumption that the onus is on you and the onus is on you. If you're not paying into a pension right now, you, you are not gonna have anything. So do not rely on the state. The fourth thing is important. And this is particularly important because again, it's very easy to get caught up with life. It is now, more than ever, so, so important that you understand what you need to do financially. And that really means upskilling yourself, understanding the foundations, budgeting, making sure that you're not leveraging too much debt, making sure that you're using your income to acquire assets, to invest. Yes, a pension is an investment, but you need to be very, very, very intentional and intentional in upskilling yourself to make sure that you're in a position where you can make the best financial decisions. Because look, no one is coming to save us. That is what we can, we can definitely establish from this news and this recommendation to the government. If you've liked this video and you're on a streak where you're trying to learn more about pensions, you should definitely go watch this video next because this gives you some great nuggets to help you make sure you have a healthy pension pot.